Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Buick Enclave, we're gonna be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is gonna work for you. Something that is pretty cool is Buick actually has this removable panel that's back here. And it definitely makes sense, you know, uh, good looking SUVs wanna keep it that way, right? And so having this removable panel uh, right from the factory, what that's going to allow you to do is remove the panel when you're ready to use the hitch, but whenever you're not using it, you're still going to be able to put this back up and lock it in and essentially make the hitch disappear. When it does come to the Enclave, you know, full-size SUV and they're pretty capable vehicles, and so having a hitch back here is really going to open up your opportunities on what you can do with your Buick, whether you plan on pulling a trailer around, you know, you're gonna be able to uh, put in a ball mount and pull your trailer or use another accessories like a cargo carrier. You know, maybe if you're going on a, on a trip, a vacation, you can pile up a bunch of stuff back here, keep it uh, open on the inside, or maybe you like to go bike riding or something along those lines. And you're gonna be able to use those type of accessories and get the job done. With this being a class three hitch, it is gonna have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Really common size, a lot of different things are gonna work with it. The end, we're gonna have a reinforced collar for a little bit of extra support. And it is going to use that standard 5 8 pin and clip. Keep in mind though, pin and clip doesn't come included. If you need one, you can always grab it here at e-trailer. Going to have loop style safety chain openings and these are going to be uh, large enough to allow us to use just about any size hook that our trailer might have. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, uh, they're going to have some pretty high numbers. Maximum gross tongue weight rating is going to be 750 pounds and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch so that's adequate for just about any accessory that you'd want to use. As far as the hitch's maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 5,000 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch, so the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Uh, this can also be used with the weight distribution system, which is a separate component, and what happens whenever you use that is it's going to keep your trailer and your Buick level whenever you're going down the road. So. If you have a large camper or something along those lines, uh, maybe worth checking into. But with that said, even if you use a weight distribution, the weight ratings are going to remain the same at 750 and 5,000. And with all that in mind, it's never a bad idea just to grab your Buick's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your SUV can pull up much weight safely. Now let's go ahead and just take a couple of measurements. That way we could try to figure out what type of hitch mounted accessories are going to work best. If you go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 20 and a half inches. So if we do plan on towing, chances are pretty good. You can get a ball mount that has, I'd say probably about a two inch drop in the shank, something in, in that ballpark. If you go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that looks like it's going to be about three and a half inches. And you can use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have, can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your Buick. There is one question I do want to address, and that is, you know, with the hitch in place, is it going to affect your hands-free liftgate assist feature? And the answer is no. So ours actually has that feature today, but there's something going on with the hatch. I think it might have been in a wreck or something. The gap over here is really big and super tight over here. And even just trying to open this up by hand, you almost have to kind of force it open but I can still show you. Hopefully we can hear it doing its thing and whatever else. Just kick your foot in the same spot you normally would. You can see it's trying to go there and uh, it'll still work like it should. Like I said, in our case today, you know, uh, kind of a mechanical error as far as uh, the hatch and, and how it's lined up and everything. But I can assure you I've done these in the past, uh, quite a few of them on ones that actually are operating as they should from the factory, don't get affected at all by the hitch or anything like that. Compared to some of the other hitches available, uh, it's really just gonna come down to personal preference. And I say that because they're all so similar. 
Um, they're all going to sit in the same spot. Uh, you know, install wise, extremely similar. You're going to be able to put the panel back over all of them. Uh, even even down to the weight capacities and things like that. So probably the biggest difference is just going to be the finish of it. Uh, the e-trailer one has this carbide matte black finish. I'm kind of partial to it. I think it looks good. It has a factory type appearance and it seems like they just hold up a little bit better over time. But like I said, it kind of is what it is and is really going to uh, boil down to uh, what, one you, what one you think you like the best. Other than that though, as far as the installation goes, uh, it's a little time consuming. You are going to have to remove the rear fascia here, which it sounds intimidating. Not really that big of a deal. Uh, only a handful of fasteners to get to, and uh, they're all pretty easy to see and, and reach and everything else. So as long as you stay focused, really shouldn't give you too many issues. Uh, speaking of that though, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our Buick and we're going to have to remove our fascia. That way we can get the hitch on. So to begin, we'll open up our rear hatch here and along this edge, we're gonna have some fasteners that we need to remove. So we'll have two plastic covers that we need to open up and just take a small screwdriver, pop them open and we'll pull out the screws underneath them. That's gonna take a seven millimeter socket. And I wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of our vehicle we're gonna do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. And then right here, we're gonna have a Torx bit fastener. So I'll take a T20 and pull that out too. Now, if we move to our rear wheel well liner along this edge, we're gonna have four T15 Torx bit screws we need to pull out. Let's go ahead and get all these removed. Once we have them out, what you can do is grab the wheel well liner, kind of peel that back up until about this point, and then that's going to allow us to gain access to a fastener uh, up here, and we're going to have to pull that out. And for that one, you're just going to use a seven millimeter socket. Now underneath the vehicle, um, along this edge, we'll have one T15 Torx bit on each side. So we'll go ahead and pull those out. So now at the next set of hands, we can get our fascia removed. I did put some painter's tape along the seams here just to help prevent any scratches if we you know, move it around. But what you're gonna do is just kind of start to pry the fascia off. Sometimes it can get hung up on the tabs, and so it's kind of gonna be kind of tricky to see here. But you could take a very small screwdriver and carefully kind of just push down, and that will release them, release that tension. We'll just work our way all the way around. Once you get kind of to the middle, you might have to kind of work it off there, and you may have some electrical connectors. In our case, it does look like we have one on the driver's side. You can push up on that red tab and then down on the center there to release them. And once we have it free, we can set our fascia off to the side. What we can do now is support our exhaust. And we're doing this because um, the attachment points for our exhaust are shared with the bumper beam, which we're gonna need to remove. So once that's pulled off, this will be able to hang down and that's why we wanna support it. So I just take a strap and run it from side to side. Get that bumper beam removed. So each side you're gonna have four fasteners. At the bottom, we're gonna have two 15 millimeter bolts. Them out. And this is what I was talking about, the exhaust being supported. Um, or sharing the same attachment points. Two 15 millimeter head nuts at the top. 
I already got the other side removed, so we should be able to grab our bumper beam, slide it off, and get it out of the way. Grab our hitch and get it into position. So if you look, this part is gonna go over uh, those existing studs that we just pulled the nuts from. This part is gonna go in the frame rail and the holes in that part are gonna line up with some factory holes that are already in the frame rail. Just to kind of give you a reference of what's going on. But what we'll do is slide this into position. And then just for the time being, I'm gonna take one of the factory nuts and just put one on each side hand tight. That way the hitch is somewhat secure while we're working on all the hardware. Starting with this one there, you're gonna take one of the fish wires, put the coil in up through there, and then we're gonna push it towards the back of the vehicle. And what we're trying to do is get that pull wire to come out of this opening there. So sometimes, Sometimes they're kind of tricky to get. Might have to reach your hand through there and help guide it out. But once you have it, you're gonna put on a spacer block, uh, carriage bolt, a little thread onto the fish wire. Then you can feed the hardware in. You should be able to pull down So we get it to uh, drop down into position. Once it is dropped down, you can remove the pull wire. The finishing hardware is gonna consist of a conical tooth washer. Make sure you're gonna put the teeth on the washer facing up like that. And then we're just gonna take a hex nut and get it started hand tight. Once that is hand tight, we're gonna use that same technique and same hardware combination to get this one going. This one's a little bit easier, being that it's closer to the opening in our hitch chair. Spacer block on our carriage bolt and essentially do the same thing. Before we tighten down that new hardware we just put in, what I like to do is just replace all of our uh, factory stuff here and snug it down. That way the hitch will kind of draw itself in and hold placement. That way when we tighten these down and remove these, we're not gonna have to worry about the hitch shifting or anything. So uh, we'll go ahead and get that done. For the bolts on the bottom is tighten and torque them down. The torque spec is listed in the instructions. And if you don't have a torque wrench, you can always grab one here at E-Trailer, or a lot of times if you go to your local auto parts store, uh, they'll have one there available that you can rent. And we're doing it this way because if we re-hung the exhaust and those other attachment points, it'd be pretty much impossible to, to get to these bolts with the mufflers in the way. So now we can come back and we're gonna remove just these two bottom bolts. So pull these out and we can change them out for these that come with the kit. So just a bolt, conical tooth washer, make sure teeth on the washer are face towards the hitch. Put them through our exhaust hangers and get these started hand tight. Then we can come back and snug them down. 
With all the correct hardware in there now, you want to make sure to come back again with our torque wrench and properly tighten them down. Now with the exhaust supporting itself, once again, we can go ahead and remove our strut. Something I do want to mention before we put our fascia back on, if you're going to be installing trailer wiring, now would be a fantastic time to do so because the connector plug that we need to plug into is right here. So obviously much easier with the fascia off to plug that in and run our wire over to the hitch. Uh, so that's exactly what I've done. The hitch doesn't come with trailer wiring, but if you need some, um, you can always grab that right here at E-Trailer. One other thing too, before we put the fascia back on, I'm going to remove this um, door here and I feel like it'll be easier just to kind of line everything up and see what's going on a little bit better uh, when we go to reinstall this. Reinstall the fascia the opposite way that we removed it. Don't forget to plug in any electrical connectors and we'll just kind of hold this up in place here so we get it lined up and snap back in. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Buick Enclave.